shooting. Last two games, 61 points on 35% shooting. Their defense is the key to their championship run. And John Calipari told us today it's about being physical, it's about being aggressive. DJ Wagner setting the tone that rubs off on his teammates. That's why defensively they've been much better the last two. But he is curious, knowing that LSU can be physical, what the game plan for the Tigers will be and how his team will respond tonight. And also, Dave, it's always the, the game in between the games. Kentucky coming off their most complete victory of the year offensively and defensively against Auburn. You have this game sandwiched in between a big showdown. You talked about on Saturday at Rupp Arena against Alabama, who's in the dog fight. I don't know how the game finished or not against Florida. Shot clock is at one. Wagner didn't even recognize it, and a turnover to start the game. Wagner had no idea the shot clock was winding down. Starting lineups brought to you by eBay. Jordan Wright scored the final seven points for LSU in an upset at South Carolina. Will Baker averaging 17 per game over his last five. Trey Hannibal's their point guard. He's their toughest player. He had 12 rebounds against the Gamecocks through the hands of Tyrell Ward and a turnover by LSU. Transition opportunity and a slam by Onyenso in transition. We heard so much conversation today about LSU's best defense will be their offense. Not turning the ball over and taking high quality shots will not allow Kentucky to get out in transition. Baker's three off the mark. He's close to a 40% three-point shooter on the year. DJ Wagner, Antonio Reeves, who's the third leading scorer in the SEC. Justin Edwards, who missed the shot there. Same starting five for Kentucky as the game at Auburn. Sierra mm. gets inside for two. Playing his 18th game of the year, he missed eight due to injury, and it's 4-0 Wildcats. I like that lineup for them so much. Look at the ball pressure right there by DJ Wagner being up on the ball. And you have him spearheading the defense, and you have Onyenso really being the anchor of the defense blocking shots like that at the rim. Foul is on Onyenso, and that was a point of emphasis for Matt McMahon, the head coach for LSU. They want to get him in foul trouble today. I see just those costly turnovers allows Kontucky to get out in transition, and that's where they find their ladder offensively. They're going to see the drive right there by Thiero, just finding a way to get to the basket, making it an easy bucket. But Will Baker's ability to space the floor and to bring Onyenso away from the basket will open up driving opportunities, and that's where LSU will make its do. That's what they were able to do against South Carolina. Just attack the paint and literally attack the rim every possession they had a chance to, which obviously eclipsed that 16-point lead and the reason why they came back. One out of two. For Baker, 75% free throw shooter, grad student from Austin, Texas. Meanwhile, Florida and Alabama are going to overtime. That game tied at 85. Ooh. Bama 10 and 2. Florida's got four losses. Alabama, or excuse me, Kentucky with four. South Carolina, four losses. Good hands by Hannibal. Out of bounds to the Tigers. Look, LSU not having Jalen Cook. He's their leading scorer. Obviously hurts them. But Trey Hannibal brings a certain sense of urgency and a passion and Matt McMahon talked about this today in their last game against South Carolina the way that Hannibal played throughout the entire game against South Carolina just played with a purpose played with a sense of urgency and passion he's never seen a player play that hard the entire length of the game there's definitely a toughness he brings to the table that LSU needs if it's going to beat Kentucky tonight they're going again at Yenso trying to get him to pick up that second foul and Baker gets the basket to pull it in one. First field goal for Baker. Here's Wagner driving down the lane, stripped by Hannibal. Going to stay with Kentucky. Just going with the ISO on Baker. And what you're going to see LSU try to do is, obviously Kentucky has the size and the length, but do they have the girth and that's what Baker's going to try to do, attack the body of Onyenso to try to get him in foul trouble. Catch and shoot jumper is good for Antonio Reeves. Kentucky obviously has a history of having great freshmen. It's kind of interesting that arguably their best player this year, most consistent player, is a grad tra or transfer from Illinois State, guy that was at a smaller school for three years. 
fifth year senior out of Chicago who's a Wooden award top 20 candidate Yeah, they try to stay attached to that hip, but you give him an ounce of freedom He can knock down that shot from wherever on the court The three from the corner for Tyrell Ward ties the game Ward is seven for his last ten from three-point land Reeves trying to put it on the floor and get past right. Beautiful move and finish off the window. He scored five in a row. Reeves closing in on 1,000 points as a member of the Kentucky Wildcats would be just the sixth under John Calipari to reach that mark. Miss inside by Baker. Offensive rebound and put back from Derek Fountain. Kentucky played against the likes of Tennessee John Calipari talked about them being out physical on the glass and that's what LSU is going to try to do They were able to limit South Carolina to single-digit offensive rebounds. They had 10 in the ball game That's where they're gonna make their money on young so catch couldn't finish though rebound Baker And Ward's gonna slow it down Baker driving, got it blocked that time. Great job by Fierro coming from the weak side. So active defensively, just having active hands. Kentucky 18 and seven. One of six SEC teams ranked this week, checking in at number 17. Moving up a handful of spots. The arrow's driving lane cut off. Shot clock at five. Reeves again driving. Floater is good, boys. He really improved from a year ago. Candidate for SEC Player of the Year, Antonio Reeves. Got the last six points for Kentucky. Hannibal penetrates, kicks it out. Baker got a good look, but it won't fall. Fierro with the rebound. Almost had it knocked away by Fountain. Kentucky looking to run. Sweet move by Wagner with the hesitation. Couldn't finish, though. Out to Reeves. He'll launch and hit. Hand Nine straight points for Reeves. I ain't trying to tell you, Antonio Reeves is a special player, shooting 44% from the three-point line, but also getting to his midi game, which opens the defense up. He's four for four to start the game. And he's outscored LSU by himself. Good look for Fountain. He's able to answer. Derek Fountain drilling the three-pointer, 33% on the year. LSU back within two. Six minutes gone by. Fierro, airspace. Couldn't hit. What and up high is Hannibal to get the board. And Hannibal's listed at 6-2. That might be generous because he's, he's a phenomenal rebounder. Catch and shoot three. On the money from Ward. Back-to-back -back LSU triples, and the Tigers take the lead. The juice that was there against South Carolina is here early on tonight for LSU. Drive and kick by Fierro. Edwards on the spot up. Great offense early on for both teams. Well, the one thing you want if you're LSU, you do not want this to be a track meet. LSU can score in the 70s, but this Kentucky team is a team that can get up and down, and they can get in the 80s, the 90s. And so over the attack. Controlling the pace of the game is going to be critical for LSU at some juncture as the game starts to settle itself down. Edwards slip and a travel. And Edwards, a little shaken up. Reeves, a hot start. For now you have him along with Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham. You talk about a three-headed monster. That's what this team is offensively. Dillingham and Shepard checking in for the first time. The other thing about Reeves, Jay, he's so consistent. You pretty much know what you're going to get from him each game. He scored in double figures every game but one. He's had 13 20-point games this year. For the lead, Jordan Wright hits a three. That's four consecutive made shots for LSU. And Jordan Wright, last three out of four games against Kentucky. 
He's had 18 points, 23 points, and 27 points. He is the guy that's found to get himself going against offensively a Kentucky team that is being challenged defensively. I mean, you talk about a fight. LSU is ready for a fight in this ballgame. And Jordan Burks getting some early minutes for Kentucky. Just committed the foul on the screen. So back-to-back -back Kentucky turnovers. Four already in the first seven minutes for the Wildcats. Animal penetrates. Looked like initially he was going to slip, but he just kept the drive alive. Spinning and missing was Reed and unable to get the putback. Free ball and eventually controlled by Dillingham. Dillingham penetrates. Great finish off the window and a stare down of Hunter Dean. That's what they want to see Rob Dillingham do more. Instead of avoiding contact, embrace the contact. He's a guy that should be going to the free throw line anywhere between 10 to 15 times a game with his ability to get to the rack. Speaking of embracing, how about a guy that's probably going to be a top 10 pick embracing his role as a guy coming off the bench just one start this year? I mean, him and Reed Shepard, and you talk about the explosiveness of Rob Dillingham. Look at him do it off the bounce. In this program, and obviously the talent is upgraded from a year ago. We had a great conversation with him earlier about how to build the program, talk about his time at Murray State. Talk about one of those seasons in particular where he had eight players in a rotation, four players or players that were built around the culture that he recruited from the time they were freshmen. The other four were the transfer portal. And that's how he's going to go about rebuilding this program right here. And you see the foul of Hannibal. Yep, reaching in there, trying to strip it away from Bradshaw. That's his first and the second on LSU. I mean, good idea to come from the weak side, but just kind of uh, kind of gets him there in the hand. It's the right call, ultimately. But you talk about only bringing one player back from Will Wade's roster and then filling out what your entire roster looks like. And I know some guys have been able to do that quicker with the transfer portal, but about maintaining and building the right culture is what Matt McMahon has been all about. Meanwhile, Bradshaw misses badly on the three. That's just his 13th attempt. He's made three on the year. LSU by one. 11 and a half remaining in the first half. Tigers with two wins against ranked teams this year and six tries. Baseline drive for Williams cut off by Dillingham. And then the ball thrown out of bounds by Jalen Reed. Jalen Reed just had an opportunity there to attack Bradshaw. And that's where you got to start picking up the fouls on those Kentucky bigs. To get both feet inside the paint, go up strong with two hands and attack their chest. The Kentucky, their bigs have the wingspans to deter and block a lot of shots. But when you talk about size and weight, that's where LSU is going to have a chance to try to bully through those bigs. Anyenso picked up a foul early. He's on the bench right now with Bradshaw getting some minutes. Shepard with a kick to Dillingham is an excellent shooter. Tried to drive, got stripped, out of bounds, knocked. Out of play by Baker. I tell you, Dave, a good job by Hunter Dean getting over there at the weak side, take away the baseline. But how explosive is Rob Dillingham when he just catches the ball? You just give him any ounce of space, and he's gone. A change of pace, change of direction. We saw that drive and finish earlier. Ooh, Bradshaw missed the dunk after the jump stop. Well, Kentucky's gone cold after a hot start. Here's the blow by from Ward. Wild shot, but draws the foul. And that's what you're talking about, going at those bigs. Foul on Bradshaw, his first. That's how LSU, like I said, controlling the pace of the game with their offense, getting to the free throw line, taking Kentucky out of transition, forcing Kentucky to execute in the half court makes the game a little bit more challenging for them and also you try to get them in foul trouble coming up on saturday a handful of great games for you on espn and the app starting at noon you got north carolina virginia at four eastern time kansas and texas at six and m tennessee at eight eastern time tennessee right now a game back of alabama for the top spot in the sec bama and florida in overtime right now
And Alabama just won by five, 98-93. So the Crimson Tide, a full game up on Tennessee for the one seed in the SEC. Really spectacular what Nate Oates has been able to do with Alabama and their high-octane offense considering the way the season started. But Mark Sears is one special player, and the way they play is, to me, one of the most exciting styles in all of college basketball. Sears obviously in the player of the year mix in the SEC. Meanwhile here, a 13-5 run for LSU. Three-point advantage for the Tigers. Midway point for the opening half. Dillingham driving, stripped out of bounds, off Dillingham, LSU ball. That's five Kentucky turnovers early on. You know, it's, it's great hands right there by right, but one of the things that Rob's going to have to work on in Dillingham is kind of cradling the ball when you go to the basket, that momentum, you bring the ball back a little bit. you got to learn how to keep the ball extended away from the defender so you can finish over the top. He's getting after on the defensive end against Mike Williams right now. Spinning baseline is right into traffic off the hands of Baker. And Shepard, who is the SEC leader in steals, has it. Turn and fire by Dillingham off the mark. It pinballs to Shepard and an alley oop to Fierro for the slam. Getting those 50 50 balls critical for Kentucky, and Reed just has the vision to find Fierro right at the rim for an easy lob. Seven second chance points for Kentucky. That's why they're in the game right now. Got off to a hot start. And a foul here on Kentucky on the LSU drive. You know, those 50 50 balls, you just got a chance to grab them, and LSU can't read, ends up being the recipient. And this what great court vision right there, just watching from the weak side. LSU falling asleep there, and Thierro being able to finish over the top. On the other end, Wagner committing the foul, his first. 14 foul, and free throws here for Jalen Reed. You talked about. The challenges of trying to build a program. Obviously, you played at a program that was good before you got there, stayed good, obviously, when you were there as you won a championship and continued to be good two decades later. John Calip Perry's been able to do that in terms of a consistent culture and program despite really the landscape changing in college basketball from when you were there. How challenging is that? You got to re recruit your players every year. And most of the time, the guys are one and done. I mean, Cal's one of the best to ever do it. Uh, he's tremendous at his job. And does he have as many championships as some other coaches? Bill Self, not yet. But there is nobody better in the game of basketball than John Calipari. And I made a comment the other day talking about comparing him to the Dallas Cowboys, not because of their inability to win championships. It's more so the way they're talked about daily in the media. Every single day, fans or people are criticizing or critiquing the way this team plays. And there's no doubt, defensively, when they are locked in, they're going to be in dogfights. But defensively, when they are locked in, combined with their offense, this team has the talent to win a championship, period. They're a blue chip program. They're headline news every game they play. And every time Cal talks, it's similar to Jerry Jones. It's going to get taken out of context. It's going to get blown up. That's the type of personality he has. Speaking of blowing up the air with a couple of rim rocking slams, and that ties the game at 22. Entry pass to Baker. Trying to back down and Yenso knocked away from behind. And a stay with LSU 12 to shoot. You know, just active hands, great on ball pressure. That's what Reed Shepard was able to do. And if I mean, talk about a guy who's continuing to grow into his body and a do the arrow. I mean, it, it's scary when you look at the size, the frame he has, his hands always adjusting to the ball. And he's going to continue to get better and better and better. Hannibal trying to cut, shot clock at one, and it's a 20, or a shot clock violation, 30 second violation. So LSU now has gone almost five minutes without a field goal. Boy, we, we had great offense the first six or seven minutes. Everything was falling, and now nobody can make a shot right now other than a dunk for Kentucky in transition. Here's Reeves, who had nine points early on. He's not taken a shot since. He's 4-4 from the floor, and those all came in the first five minutes. 
Shot clock inside of 10. Shepard, deep three, off the mark. Rebound Baker. Shepard still shooting better than 50% from three on the year. And Jordan Wright is doing a tremendous job chasing Antonio Reeves all around the court, just staying attached to his hip, not letting him get even a space of freedom to shoot the ball. Wright thought about the three instead, drives, lost his footing, finds Baker though, but he couldn't hit the bunny. And now Shepard racing up the floor. Shepard could not finish. Hannibal got in his way and distracted him. But taken away by Reeves and a foul on Baker of LSU. That's his first and the third on the Tigers. Look, we knew it was going to be a dog fight. Kentucky came out. They're trying to impose their will defensively. Let's see. Is Alabama the best team in the league, or is it Tennessee? In terms of going deepest in the NCAA tournament, or is it Kentucky? I, I, I think, for me, it's between Kentucky and Tennessee. I think in, Kentucky's, when they start defending, if they can find what that rhythm is, as you see Reeves with another baseline floater. But once again, I think there's so much room for improvement with where they are defensively, and then the way Tennessee defends, and the Dalton Connect story is just insane to me that a player could go kind of not on the map at all last year to being a guy that's going to be considered a top five pick in this upcoming NBA draft. That's how talented and good Dalton Connect is. Dillingham had a wide open three but couldn't bury it. And it's LSU ball. Kentucky up two, seven minute mark, first half. And see, this is where you're going to have to, Rob Dillingham is going to have to get up in him. You need to continue to apply that pressure. DJ Wagner's really good at it, but everybody else needs to work on their defensive pressure as well. Finally, one goes down. Jordan Wright gets the bounce, the first field goal in six minutes for LSU. Credit Kentucky's defense. Third straight game, they've been really good on that end. Reeves, his first miss. Onyenso trying to go back up, and it'll be a held ball. It will go to LSU on the possession arrow. The level of physicality here just feels very different with the way LSU is playing. You know, Baker just meeting him there. That's a jump ball. That's the right call. Active hands. And when you think about these guards, Hannibal and Wright, they are bigger upper body frames. They're able to bully their way to the basket. That's a good matchup. Hannibal against Wagner. Going body to body now in the switch. Wagner's on right. Wagner shoving Fountain out of the way to try to get to his man. Launching the three is right in and out. Rebound Reeves. Tied at 24, six minute mark. Wagner gets into the lane. Tough angle, wouldn't fall. Rebound Dean. Just didn't stay on balance on that shot. Continued to float to the left. Oh, Hannibal, great move. Getting rid of Dillingham, tried to leave it for Dean underneath and gave it away. Dillingham in the open floor, Kentucky with a three on two. Dillingham's pull up three, no good. And mistiming his jump was Hannibal, so an offensive rebound for Kentucky. That, that did not look good, that fast break there. That alley you pass looked good, but Fierro wasn't able to finish it. Kentucky's missed six consecutive shots. Talk about a game with pace. Barely got that ball over. Right, using the screen, gets into the lane, almost traveled, turned it over again. Good hands, Kentucky. Reeves in transition, hangs, missed the layup though. Neither team can buy one after both teams couldn't miss in the first five minutes. There is an on-ball intensity from Kentucky in the defensive end. Shot clock at five. Wild shot from Ward, not there. Dean with the rebound, out to right. He's got to put it up with one on the timer. Hit the back rim. Long rebound, Fierro. I'd like to see a team run a set, get something off action, get Reeves going offensively. He's a guy that's so gifted or find a way to get to the rim. Reeves is five for seven from the floor. He's the leading scorer with 11 points. Floater here, won't fall. Backside rebound, Fountain. 
Well, Hannibal is going to recognize that he has Rob Dillingham on him, and Hannibal outweighs Dillingham by about 25 pounds. You know, LSU is one of the best teams in the conference at playing ISO basketball. That, they take him right to the block. Exactly. Kicked it out. Ward penetrates. Floater is good. LSU back in front. A smart move right there by Matt McMahon to ISO Hannibal on the block against a smaller defender. Force the defense to collapse. 26-24, Tigers. Dillingham goes oh. behind the back. Couldn't make the shot from that difficult angle. Was in between a bank shot. Here's Fountain. His teammate right there, so couldn't pull the trigger. There are three minutes to go here in the first half. Can LSU pull another upset? Just beat number 11 South Carolina on Saturday. Fountain penetrating kick and a Kentucky foul. 15 foul on Kentucky. LSU leading by two. Tyrell Ward with somebody engaged in the offense. Obviously, the pace of this game we were just talking about this, Dave, is very helpful skelter, right? And that's where I think Kentucky has a chance to show a little bit of their, their, matur their maturation on the offensive end by calming it down, valuing possessions. They have four assists and seven turnovers thus far in this game. And Kentucky has missed nine consecutive shots. LSU has gone four and a half minutes without a field goal, already had a six-minute stretch. Or Kentucky right now, excuse me, no field goals in the last four and a half minutes. LSU had that six-minute stretch earlier. Two-point Tiger lead. Reeves trying to get downhill, but the angle cut off. LSU just doing one heck of a job defensively, staying in front of the ball and helping each other out. Shepard knocks down the shot, his first points of the game. It's amazing how Shepard predominantly always stays on balance when he's able to lift and just gets to his spots. First make in the last 10 tries for the Wildcats. Offensive rebound by Dean. Hannibal got the defender off his feet, and that's going to be two fouls on Onyenso. We'll see if John Calipari will keep him in. Nope, he's going to go to the bench. A really smart play by Hannibal to be able to get the ball in the gaps here and just get Onyenso up in the air and draw the contact. This guy obviously had 10 blocks against Ole Miss, getting him out of the ball game, getting him in foul trouble, allowing your bigs to continue to try to dominate the blocks. That's how you put your team in the best position to win this game. Hannibal missed the first free throw. Coming up on Friday night, we've got an NBA doubleheader for you with the post-All-Star break festivities getting underway in Philadelphia. Tyrese Maxey, former Kentucky Wildcat, and the Sixers hosting Cleveland, and then it's Giannis and the Bucks against Anthony Edwards and the Timberwolves, who have the best record in the West coming out of the All-Star break. You expect that? Not really with Minnesota. But, you know, Anthony Edwards has really proven himself to be one of the stars of this game and moving forward for the rest of his career. He's a special talent. Meanwhile, on the floor for Kentucky is Ivicic. So Ivicic, who played one minute against Auburn, is in the game. Burks played four minutes against Auburn. He's been out there for seven or eight so far. Reeves from deep, drills a three. He's got 14 points. And that's Kentucky's total. LSU just not staying disciplined defensively. And then Williams couldn't catch that pass, so a turnover by LSU. You know, Reeves is so good, such a deadly threat from outside. Gets Hannibal off his feet and just takes one dribble to the side and knocks down the three. Super composed with how he plays offensively. Really under control. Played a lot of games over five years. Started out at Illinois State. Shout out Doug Collins, by the way. Hall wow. of Fame finalist. Nice finish by Shepard. He's got two buckets here in the last couple minutes. A big time step through right there by Reed Shepard. So Kentucky by four. Largest lead for either team in a while. Good hands by Shepard. And he's able to strip it and get his second steal. Leading the SEC in that category. What a gorgeous finish by Reeves and a timeout by LSU. And that's what Reed Shepard is so good at doing. Getting those steals and then finding a way for Kentucky. He's an excellent shooter, but we've seen the mid-range. We've seen him get to the cup a couple times. He's got 16 points. Yeah, Kentucky definitely came out flat, but he was able to keep them in the ball game early. 
But I think what you've seen the last several possessions is just the elevation of Kentucky's defense. And Reed Shepard, you know, Coach K used to always talk about this. The, the difference between winning and losing games is some players will bend over with their knees for loose balls, and the winning player dives and sacrifices their body. And that's what you just saw Reed Shepard doing that last possession. Visic call for the foul, hugging Will Baker. So that's his first. And the 16 foul on Kentucky. So it'll be a side out of bounds. Final minute here of the opening half. LSU with 10 turnovers and nine field goals. So that's a big issue right now for the Tigers protecting the basketball. Matt McMahon, their head coach, said if uh, we do that tonight, we're not going to win. They're still in the game despite those turnovers. Check that. That was the 17 foul. So a one and one there. Baker missed it, but an offensive rebound. And now an open look from the corner. Jalen Reed can't pay it off with a three. Rebound Burks. About an 18 second difference in the game and shot clocks. Shepard defended by Wright. Gets past him. Into the lane. Kicks it out. Good play. Edwards spot up three. And it's a nine point lead now for Kentucky. What a reverse pivot right there by Reed Shepard. Just the vision to see the weak side and kick it over to Edwards, whose hands were ready for that shot the entire time. Ten seconds remaining in the half. Here comes the screen for Jordan Wright. And stripped by Shepard. Loose ball. Burks got it away in time. Couldn't make the shot. But still a 10 nothing run by Kentucky to close out the first half. 36 27, the Wildcats in front. Thing run to close out the half. Third straight game that Kentucky has held its opponent under 30 points in the first half. A big paradigm shift the last few games for the Wildcats with this improved defense. We know they can score. Only Alabama and Arizona average more points per game than Kentucky. 88 points per game, but on pace for about 72 and a foul just seven seconds in and Tyrell Ward Kentucky fans have to think about this for a second You have a nine-point lead on the road have not played anywhere close to your best basketball defensively and offensively And you've been able to have that lead without one free throw attempted in the first half Yeah, just Three first half fouls on LSU. That's why we we're stunned by the whistle seven seconds in three from the corner Justin Edwards, just a 28% three-point shooter. 13 consecutive Wildcat points. A great execution out of the half for set to get Edwards going offensively on the flare screen. Here's Wright trying to answer. LSU is 0 for its last six from deep after starting the game four of six from three. And then you just feel like these first five minutes are so important for LSU because you feel like the game's on the verge of getting out of hand. With the Kentucky run as you see Reeves knock down the big time three in transition and Matt McMahon Felt exactly as you did Paul stance active hands head in the swivel LSU was not that in the opening seconds of the first half nope, second half didn't react to Reeves either being open So back-to-back -back threes for Kentucky to start the second half So going back just a couple of minutes at the end of the first half. It was 27 26 LSU 16 straight Kentucky points Again, showing you why they're one of the most potent offensive teams in the country. Reeves committing a foul here, trailing Ward. That is his first. Well, miscues defensively, losing Reeves in transition, and then having your knee, your hands on your knees, not being ready and reactive defensively. You know, that's where a team is going to slice and dice you apart. And Kentucky now 6 of 12 from 3. The tip is good by Fountain. And finally, that 16-0 run comes to an end. A foul on LSU on the other end. It's going to go on Will Baker. That is his second. Now check that Ward, his second. Just after a made bucket there, three seconds and the ball is already being attacked on the opposite end. Uh, that's how quickly when we talked to Matt McMahon today about when you make a bucket You got to put your head down and sprint back on defense because Kentucky is running at you quickly Kentucky coming off the win at Auburn back home Saturday to face Alabama Floater won't fall just the third miss of the game for Antonio Reeves who has a game-high 19 points 
obviously a ton of time for LSU. Not as high octane on offense as Kentucky, but Trey Hannibal's a guy to get going. Gets inside for two, four straight points for LSU. Well, he has really good speed, but he has better size. And when those shoulders get by you, he carves out space. Doesn't allow you to get back into the play defensively. Nice backdoor cut by Reeves. He draws the foul. And here come the first free throws for Kentucky. DP, I said it to you earlier during halftime. We were trying to think of an NBA comp, and we threw out names like D. Book, Bradley Bill. He, he, he reminds me a lot of Rip Hamilton just with his ability to move without the ball. He's constantly moving, and he's really good at reading screens, flare screens, pin downs, that little baseline cut. You take your eye off him for one second, or you're not maintaining contact with him. He's finding ways to create space and get open. And this is his 14th 20-point game. And he is now four points away from a thousand at Kentucky. He's been here for two years, was at Illinois State for three, would be the sixth player under John Calipari to hit to a thousand points. That because obviously most guys would score a thousand, but they're not around for a second year. <laughs> First class problems, Dave. Yep. And Jamal Murray has as a fountain gets the basket, the highest scoring average under Calipari, right at 20 points per game. Antonio Reeves at 19.5. But I love that comp on, on Rip Hamilton. And again, you watch Reeves. There is, he's very smooth. He's under control. And I get that we fall in love with potential and guys that are freshmen or playing overseas that we haven't had a chance to see at the college level. But here's a guy that's a terrific proven college player who clearly has an NBA future. Fountains three, not close. Underneath to get the rebound, though, is right. Out to Ward. Three on target. And here comes LSU back with an eight. Piero not ready for the pass that time. Almost hit him in the face. Here's Wagner. He averages 11 points per game, but he has not scored for Kentucky. 0 for 3. Piero looking to drive. Misses badly. Poked out. Hannibal looking to run. Kentucky's back. Hannibal attacks anyway. Missed the layup with the left. Did everything but finish. Now Wagner coughs it up. And a foul. Uh, they said the best time to knock down the three is off of an offensive rebound on its last play. Look at DJ Wagner. He's staring at the flight of the ball down here, number 21. Just staring at the flight of the ball. And the LSU player just is able, unencumbered, to come get the offensive rebound, kicks it out, and they're able to knock down the three. Those, those are the kind of plays that you still want to see the maturity level for Kentucky excel in the right way, finding somebody, putting a body on somebody to actually block out. LSU on a 9 2 run. Calipari making some changes. Burks coming back in. And now foul away from the play. It's on Reeves. Actually, second on him. Third team foul at Kentucky. Not surprised to see this fight from LSU. They were down 20 against Florida a couple games ago and had a chance to tie the game at the end of regulation. Right, deep three. LSU back within five, a 12-2 run. Going for the steal is Hannibal. Got the deflection. Shepard penetrate and kick. Burks pull up jumper, no good. Rebound right. Who's stopping the ball? Who's stopping the ball? Nobody is right. Drills a three. Timeout, Kentucky. 15 to 2 run by LSU. Came down 16 in the second half to beat South Carolina. Trailed by 15 early this half and back within two. And what a chess match. You had Kentucky come out, knock down two threes to start the second half. Matt McMahon called a timeout, got his team ready back into the ball game. Let's see how Kentucky responds. Gillingham misses from the foul line. LSU ball with Fountain getting the rebound. The Tigers can tie or take the lead. Their last lead was at the two-minute mark of the first half, but it was 27-26 before Kentucky went on a 16-0 run. 
The stick back won't go by Baker. LSU had two chances, point blank range, could not finish. I like the action though, getting Ayenso outside on the three point line and forcing him to defend on the perimeter. Shepard puts it on the deck, hits Reeves, great catch, and draws the foul. That was a bullet pass by Shepard. Good hands by Reeves, and he'll go to the line where he just made two free throws a moment ago. But that's the blueprint. That's what teams are going to try to do. When you have young players in the front court that are trying to defensively guard in the perimeter and pick and roll, that's where guys like Hannibal and Jordan Wright are going to have their opportunities to get into those gaps and kick out to threes and also find ways to finish at the rim. Foul on Baker, his third, fourth on LSU. Reeves now with 22 points. Well, every Thursday, a women's basketball doubleheader on SEC Network in the ESPN app. This week, the number one team in the land, South Carolina, hosts Alabama at 7 Eastern time. Then Angel Reese, who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jay Williams today at shoot-around. Did she, though? She well, did. Yes, yeah, she did. It was close. She did. She did. They take on Auburn. <laughs> Jay won. We actually have video footage we'll show you at some point. As bodies hit the floor here, and there's not going to be a foul or anything. Just the stoppage of play, but they might go to the monitor and look. It's okay. I understand wait, wait. what you're saying. I, I is think she the greatest of all time? Is it's hard to the say greatest she, of all but, time. But to you? I don't. I don't know that she's the greatest of okay. all time. She's the best offensive player that I've seen. I said that in my comment. I said she's the most prolific scorer the game of basketball potentially has ever seen. Her range is something we have not seen in it's the women's incredible, game. It's incredible, spectacular. Reeves picks up the foul, his third. So I guess what I'm trying. Where to are you help you with here? Where are you trying to help me with? I'm trying to, you're saying she's great because it came off as if you're saying she wasn't. Yeah, you're saying she's great. You're yeah, just not great. putting her in the Brady category of the All best time. we've ever yes. seen. And I think that's fair. I think we need to see how this rest of the season plays out. I'm with you on that. Okay. I don't think that it's, it's an outrageous comment like a lot of people felt. Well, based on how you just clarified well, people, well, that. well, people didn't hear me when I said it's another turnover by Kentucky once again. People didn't hear words like prolific. Yeah. People didn't hear words like in order to be in the pantheon or into the levels of immortality. You mean we're just going to clip three seconds of a 30-second comment? That's what happens. That That's really? apparently what happens in the media world. <laughs> All right, back to this. Kentucky up four. Look at this. I'm Look, reeling you, you in now. I mean, you <laughs> took me down a dark path here. I'm in the alley by myself. Here's Hannibal putting it on the deck and kicking it out. Shot clock at 10. Ward penetrates, hangs, and draws a foul on Shepard. He'll go to the line. I also understand, just to finish it. No, 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 no. Because Can we talk about Kentucky yes, LSU for yes, but, a second? But, but again, to, to, to try to remind people, you were, over the last 25 years, one of the best college basketball players, period. When did you turn into Walton, and when did I turn into Dave Pass? <laughs> no. no I what did. is happening right now? <laughs> I, but I'm agreeing with you. The, the, if it were... If, if I were Bill and you were me, we'd be disagreeing. I, I'm agreeing with you because your standard is very high. Because, again, over the last 25 years, I can't name five players better than you in the college game. Thank you. So your standard is high. I, I get that. And I think, again, you've like Kelsey added Pons. some color commentary to your original statement that I think that I think makes it clear what you're trying to communicate. Well, welcome to TV when you get a little bit tripped up on your words. You meant to say greatest, when you say great, it gets blown out of court. That's fine. Uh, but Kelsey Plum was one of the greatest scorers the game has ever seen, and we still talk about winning championships, right? Like that's, a, that's something that it's okay to do. That's my standard. Other people will have other standards. They can live by it, and I live by it. Still trying to wrap my head around the fact that you're me and I'm... How did this Bill. happen to you? LSU down two with possession. Up and under, Reed ties it up at 46. Kentucky's gone cold, missing six straight shots. LSU is stormed back to tie it up. Five and a half minutes for the Wildcats without a field goal. Shepard. The arrow, out of control, can't get it, rebound right, 
19 to 4 LSU runs. Great job by LSU. Everybody going up vertically, not bailing Fierro out with a foul. Hannibal Loss. Hunter Dean gives LSU its first lead since late in the first half. This LSU team continues to fight. Third straight game. They've stormed back from a deficit, but Shepard with the basket. A hard foul. He ties it up and a chance at a three-point play. Shepard is so dangerous getting through him. Look how he extends the ball. Look how he extends the ball, puts it out there with his left, is able to take the contact by Dean and still finish at the rim. There's a reason why Kentucky has two guys have a chance to be lottery picks that are literally coming off the bench. They are energizers. They are offensive threats of a different elk. It wasn't really a hard foul, just a, a hard hit to the stanchion as Shepard collided with it. He completes the three-point play and gives Kentucky a one-point lead, 49-48. Our LSU, I will continue to run ball screens. That's where they've been able to find their way. Williams driving into traffic, kicks it out. What a pass. Reed out to right. Hannibal. Shot clock down to three. Wright has to put it up. Runner off the window. It falls off the rim. And a foul on Kentucky. How about Trey Hannibal? Smallest guy on the floor. Had 12 rebounds last game. He's got three blue jerseys around him. And he draws a foul trying to get the rebound. Now they're saying just out of bounds. Standing out of bounds. Okay. Okay. So we got clarification that out of bounds off Kentucky. LSU ball. 20 on the shot clock. Down one. Wildcats right now. Two games out of first in the loss column with a big game coming up against Alabama on Saturday. Top four teams in the SEC get a bye wow. in the SEC tournament again. Jalen Reed backing down on Yenso. And a foul called here on Edwards. Yeah, we're talking 16 about foul. Jalen Reed weighing 230 pounds going against Ayenso. I mean, just moving him out of the way. And we talked about Kentucky's bigs having size and that wingspan. But the way that LSU has to attack him is right through their chest. And that's what you saw Reed do, just attack the chest of Ayenso. Jalen Reed had a big game at South Carolina with 13 points. He knocks down the free throw, just his fourth point of the game. But got some intangibles that he's brought to the table tonight, especially here in the second half. I mean, they got Reed listed at 230 pounds. They got Ayinsa listed at 246. I don't know about that. <laughs> Looking at Reed right now on the court, he's a grown man. Very powerful and having a big impact here on the offensive end. Trey Mitchell not playing tonight out with that shoulder injury Reeves not on the floor who's going to step up offensively maybe it'll be Dillingham drives and kicks it out here's Wagner three won't fall LSU rebound Wagner still without a point he averages 11 per game and he's missed his last 11 threes and a foul here on the reach in by Edwards that's 17 fouls on Kentucky LSU will have two free throws when we come back a one-point lead for the so uh, that's gonna be a contrast of styles obviously Virginia is like a boa constrictor with how they take the air out of the ball and value possession so who imposes their will first will ultimately determine the winner of that you mentioned Hubert one time a colleague of ours at ESPN was an excellent analyst whether it was on games or on college game day seat that you now Occupy as uh, Wright gets the free throw one more coming he destroyed you in the game of horse I heard as well. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. if you want to play horse with uh, <laughs> Your broadcast partner <laughs> Hubert Davis is the wrong guy to play against <laughs> Although watching you today. I'm glad I sat that one out with you and angel Great hands by Wright, getting the steal Shepard trailing and he knocked the ball away But a foul back to the free throw line goes Jordan Wright and just the active hands by LSU they're everywhere. They're involved in the play. 
He missed a hard pass, tried to pass it to his right outside hand, and Wright just got in there. I love the hustle by Shepard to get back and not allow an easy bucket there. So Jordan Wright transferred from Vanderbilt. Boy, Matt McMahon raved about his growth. Missing a potential game tying shot against Florida, but coming back and basically winning the game against South Carolina. Outstanding night tonight for LSU, even though we just missed that first free throw. Almost airballed. I'm glad he rubbed his hands on his shorts. Every Hooper knows that when you airball a ball, it's always because your hands are super wet. <laughs> it's always the excuse. By the way, Rob Dillingham out here in this game only has two points, but he averages around 15 per game. And sweaty hands for both Dillingham and Wagner. Yes. Long pass, and Ward tried to save it. It pinballs to Shepard. And McMahon really upset with his team, ruining that opportunity in transition. The three in and out for Reeves. And one and done almost every possession now for Kentucky. That's where Jordan Wright's going to have a field day. They're going to switch on that. You got the post up with Dean down low, and you got the mismatch. Here's a three from Ward that's way off. Kentucky ball. Kentucky won for its last 11. They have seven second chance points. That's it. And they turn it over. Dillingham trying to hit Reeves. You know, the first half, it was LSU being careless with the ball. Now you're seeing Kentucky have a plethora of turnovers here. And just by active hands. I mean, just that's telegraph pass. I don't know if that's that. See, that, that may not have been off Antonio Reeves. That, that should be Kentucky basketball. Five turnovers, though, by Kentucky. One by LSU in the second half. Again, Reed penetrates and scores. Lead up to five for LSU. They trailed by 15 early in the second half. So in less than 10 minutes, it's a 20-point swing. Dillingham drives, finishes, finally on the board with his second field goal. No points still for DJ Wagner. And Dillingham averaging about 16 per game in conference games. And a foul, there wasn't a lot of contact. Dillingham saying he was held by Williams coming around the screen. Instead commits the foul his first, and it'll be a one and one, 19 foul. A good job right here, curling by Dillingham and keeping right on his outside hip and then finishing with the left hand. And this is the drive here by Jalen Reed. I think he got away with a little push off right there with the left hand. That could have been called for an offensive foul. A one and one. Mike Williams, 70% free throw shooter. So Rob Dillingham, Dave, was absolutely right on this last play. It's a better move by a young player, Williams. He wrapped up Dillingham's arms. You know, one of those old NBA moves you see where the arm's out, you just wrap your hands up around it and kind of throw your body up in the air. Uh, that's how you get refs to make those calls. Lead back to five, matching the largest for LSU tonight. Dillingham is fouled, colliding with Williams, who is out of control. That's the seventh team foul on LSU, so a one and one. Check that sixth team foul, so still not in the bonus. First foul on Williams. Kentucky, eight and four in league play. Dillingham's three is good. First three-pointer for Dillingham, who's fourth in the SEC in threes. Hunter Dean has to be up on those ball screens. Wow. Rejection by, they're going to count it, though. Goaltending on the arrow is a late call, but count the basket. John Calipari very upset about the call. They're going to look at it during the next opportunity. Let's see if the ball hits the glass. Because it was called on the floor, you That's can clean. review it. That looks that is clean. clean. My that guess is a is, clean block. Yeah, I'm with you. I think they overturned that when they have a chance to go look at it. That is a big time block by Fierro. Right there, once again, coming from the weak side. Shepard. Fierro. Short on the three. And no second chance opportunities. Good to see Hannibal back out there. He was shaken up earlier. Both teams 7 of 17 from three. Four point advantage for LSU. Trying to beat a ranked team for the second straight game. They won two games in the league all of last year. 
Dean with a kick out. Reed driving. And a Kentucky foul. That's 10 team fouls. Reed will shoot two. And they get Dillingham for his second personal. So back to the line goes Jalen Reed. Three of four at the line tonight, 62% on the year. I wish he'd just being the aggressor defensively and then not settling. That's how they got themselves back in the ballgame against South Carolina. Just kept finding themselves in the paint and off dribble penetration, making shots out the rim. Two of the top teams of the Pac-12 highlighter ESPN women's basketball Thursday primetime matchup with number 12 UCLA taking on 18th ranked Utah. Coverage starts 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 out in Westwood. One more free throw for Reed. And the lead back to five for LSU. Again, they still have that goaltending call to look at. It might cost LSU two points. Here's Reeves, 23 points. Poked away, but a foul called on Hannibal. Still, I mean, Hannibal is just everywhere defensively. Maybe able to get in that gap to stop that drive by Reed. You see Reeves comes here and he just gets his hand in there. It's uh, not a foul, <laughs> at least not with the left hand, maybe with the right. I think it was on the right hand. Yeah. It was the right hand that initiated the contact that was on the inside of the screen that viewers couldn't see. The left hand strip was clean, but it was the right hand foul. It's the right call. Second foul on Hannibal, 17 foul. So Reeves at the line for a one and one. Point number 1,000 at Kentucky for Antonio Reeves. But a lot of players over the years to reach that total at Kentucky, but because of all the great young players that John Calipari has had that didn't stay long enough to get a thousand points, he's just the sixth under Coach Cal. And he's up to 25 for the game. Another great night for Antonio Reeves, candidate for SEC Player of the Year, candidate for National Player of the Year. And back to a three point game nearing the eight minute mark. Reed puts it on the deck again, attacking, missing. Baker lost it, gathers, stripped. Nice play, Dillingham. And then look at the speed of Dillingham going the length of the floor. And an LSU foul. There was some contact. Is he a blur or what? I mean, he had Reed down the middle of the lane, but he just had his eyes fixated on the rim. And just uh, look how quickly he gets the ball down the floor. Clearly a foul on Reed. His first 18 foul in the act, so two shots for Dillingham. And Dave, when I see a big backpedaling, that's my best time to attack you off the dribble. Because now you have to react to which way I can go left or right and find. And he has such acrobatic ways of finishing at the rim. It just puts the defense on their heels. Is that something innate, or does that come with reps in time and recognition? I think that's innate talent for him. I think his game still can be refined. To so many different degrees. I mean, the, the sky is the limit for this young man. He'll get a breather here. Or as MJ said, the roof is the ceiling for him. <laughs> you definitely don't hate North Carolina if you're quoting North Carolina guys. I mean, it's a legendary quote. It's Michael Jordan. 59 58, LSU by one. Wright kicks it out to Reed. Again, driving. That's from the story for LSU. Reed just taking it downhill against the Kentucky D. Dillingham penetrates. Can't finish. Great defense by Reed. That's how you stay vertical. Got it ahead to right. That's a goal 10. Count the basket for Hannibal. LSU getting out and running. took an entire half for this to happen maybe even less than 10 minutes maybe seven or eight by the time LSU had the lead back and it's been three to five point advantage for them here the last few minutes here's Dillingham driving finishing off the window sweet move that time by Rob Dillingham he's found ways using that left hand getting to that side of the rim 
the last six or seven times. The difference for LSU in the second half has been getting points in the paint, and it's Jalen Reed a lot of times doing the damage. 18 paint points. Got a mismatch. Oh, they missed it. To 10 in the first half. Shot clock at 5. Williams penetrates, hangs, missed the shot. Tip won't go. And rebounded by Kentucky's Bradshaw. And Dillingham is just starting to feel it, you can tell. Was quiet, was stuck on two points for the longest time, but now has 11. Looking to drive here. Gives it up. Got it back, though. Stayed with it after Ward got the deflection. Shot clock at 8. I saw. Cal just told him, you go score. Dillingham, step back, 3. Off the mark. LSU ball with a one-point lead. Six minutes to play. A lot at stake for Kentucky. Seeding. Joe Lenardi right now has him as a five. Still a chance to win the regular season crown. They're two back in the loss column, and they play Alabama Saturday. Baker puts it on the floor. Again attacking and scoring. wonder if Matt McMahon said at halftime, Hey, guys, we talked about this at shooter on. We got to go at these bigs. And a timeout by Kentucky. And a great job recognizing by Will Baker just being able to, they thought it was going to be a dribble handoff. He decided to keep it himself and finish throwing with the left hand. Offensive end. John Calipari told us today he was concerned about would Kentucky match the physicality of LSU? We saw Kentucky be physical at Auburn and win that game, holding them to 59 points. But LSU has been very aggressive, going right at the front court players for the Wildcats. And Kentucky's going to have to value the ball down the stretch in order to win this game. And they've been turning it over a lot here in the second half. Shot clock at four. Here's Shepard with two pull up jumper. And the putback slam, Fierro. Kentucky. Back within one after John Calipari called the timeout, leaving him with one for the final five minutes of the game. Ward around the screen. Gives it up to the corner. Here's Williams for three. LSU four of seven from three in the second half. Made four in the entire first half as Shepard turns it over. Mike Williams is a big time three as a freshman, knocking it down at 16 points against Alabama. They came a little bit off him on the weak side. And he has caught that thing with complete confidence to knock it down. 13 turnovers now for Kentucky. Here's Wright driving. Oh, he missed the layup. Rebound, Rees, five on four for Kentucky, with Wright still on the other end. Dillingham penetrates, squeaks between two defenders and lays it in. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That little guy finding a way to finish in between those trees? That's 13 now for the freshman from Hickory, North Carolina, pulling Kentucky within two. Four minutes to play. Going to come down to their defense for Kentucky. Can they get stops? Great, nice cut. Great block by Fierro. Loose ball. Stays with LSU. Shot clock at six. Ward. Missed it. Reed kept it alive. Williams hit a three a moment ago. Settles smart. things down. Very smart play. Didn't force it. Looks to drive again. Going at Onyenso. And another Kentucky foul. LSU for the third straight game. Eight. Williams, who's on the floor for Hannibal at the line. Yeah, Mike Williams able to knock down a big time three and found a way to get to the rim for two free throws here. But they're going to need Trey Hannibal down the stretch. His defensive IQ, his ability to get his hands, poke, get those steals, and also his playmaking ability offensively makes the game easier for Jordan Wright to get off offensively as well. well LSU has missed eight free throws in this game. One out of comes. two for Williams. So Hannibal back on the floor with 335 to go and his team up three. Now you have two ball handlers, two guys that can play off ball screens, that can finish at the rim with Hannibal and Wright. Just showed you that 
not only have they missed eight, they've taken 14 more free throws than Kentucky. The Wildcats didn't even get an attempt in the first half. Dillingham leaves it for Reeves, who's had a great night. Floater blocked, and it's LSU ball. Reeves thought he got fouled and not got hit on the on the elbow. I played through the contract. I thought he did as I well. I thought he did as well. Obviously, no call. LSU ball with a three point lead. LSU's largest lead has been five. Kentucky was up 15 if you're just joining us early in the second half after a 16 0 run. Shot clock down right to back. three. Here's Wright with two. Has to put it up. Long rebound. Onyenso, Kentucky ball down three with two and a half left. Kentucky's going to switch that accent. White's going to have to go a lot faster. Dillingham off the bounce. Wow. It's a deep two. Kentucky back within one. Oh, look at this to make sure that his foot was on the line. I'm going to tell you, I thought Rob Dillingham got fouled in that three shot as well. Said all the right things. And really impressive young man. I try to tell young players all the time, who cares who starts? It's about who finishes the game. And Rob Dillingham is on the court to finish this game. I guarantee you that. We are tied at 67. Wright stops. Great job by Ayunsi to stay down and discipline. Reed driving again. Wow. Got it what? up and in over the outstretched arm of Ayunsi to give LSU a two point lead. He had one point at halftime. He's been the LSU offense in the second half. Dillingham fouled. That's 19 fouls on LSU. It'll be a one and one. Pass. I'm always going to keep it a buck. I don't think Reed. Even thought this ball had a chance to go in. I mean, first, what a hero step. He throws it up. I mean, what a shot. What a shot. Step through there, avoid, takes on the contact from Fierro on the backside, but avoids on in. So, what a degree of difficulty is 25 on that? At 13 against South Carolina, as Dillingham gets the first 12 points tonight for Reed, 11 in the second half. What you're liking from Dillingham in this game so far is shots that I saw him take against Auburn. He faded to the left on free throws and a lot of things. You're seeing him go straight up and straight down. When he's a balanced player, that is when he's at his best. At just one basket in the first half, 15 points, five field goals in the second half. Tie game at 69 apiece. Inside two minutes to go. Huge game for Kentucky trying to keep. SEC title hopes alive. Block. Give it to him on the block. Trying to build on the momentum of a big win at Auburn. They've got Alabama on Saturday. Reed drive and kick. Shot clock at five. Hannibal kicks it out. Good look. Baker hit the thing. The seven footer is an excellent shooter. He drills a triple. LSU up three with 1.15 to go. Dillingham drive and kick gets it back Wow has it rejected Ward swats it out of play I told you Trey Hannibal was me critical in this game down the stretch back in Reeves down the pass to Baker who is a 38% three-point shooter And it doesn't allow Kentucky to sit in the paint and Ward with a big-time block Using that size and that wingspan on a smaller guard. Reeves catch and shoot, missed it. Reed with the rebound for LSU. Are they going to call a foul? Yes. Wasn't sure if they call a held ball or a foul. It's a foul on Kentucky. The possession arrow favored LSU anyway, but with the foul, you got two free throws for the Tigers. Said before they have him listed at 226, but he's playing like he's 250 right now. They call the foul on Shepard is third and Reed 62% at the line. Four of six tonight, trying to extend the lead. It's at three right now, just outside a minute to play. And I like the move by Matt McMahon to put Terrell Ward, who's 6'6, six, six, with a seven foot wingspan on the likes of Rob Dillingham. And that's something that Dillingham's going to have to see at the next level. Tall. Long defenders that can play off of you, but still block your shot late if they contest. Another miss, the ninth for LSU at the line. You think they know about winning big games? You think Angel Reese knows about winning big games? 
She also knows what loses close games. Yes, she does. Miss free throws. And Reed. That wow. hit the top of the backboard. It didn't go over, and it somehow goes in. It pushes the lead to four. Dillingham doesn't have to be in a hurry. Gets downhill, hangs. Ooh. Oh, what a finish. Oh, my goodness. Dillingham hung in the air. Had some English. High Hi. off the window and in. Hallelujah. Are you kidding me? I mean, first the rip through over the top to finish through the crowd with the English off the glass. Tell him, Dillingham, he is him. Fourth foul on Baker. 18 second half points for Dillingham, the outstanding freshman. Trying to complete the three point play and get Kentucky within one. Calmly drills the foul shot. Kentucky is 12 of 12 at the strike. It's a one point game. What a game. About a 22 second difference in the game and shot clocks. Wright just going to pound it into the deck at midcourt. Got to score here. You have to score here if you're LSU. And a Smart timeout. timeout. We're going to leave LSU with one. So each coach has one timeout remaining, 12 to shoot for LSU. So you have to score right now if you're LSU. I know your defense has been decent, but Rob Dillingham is on it. Raced in about a six-minute span by LSU. Okay. So you saw two games against Florida. They raced a 20-point lead. Who had the shot down the stretch? Jordan Wright. Yeah. You saw the last seven points scored in their last win against South Carolina. Who had the ball down the stretch? Jordan Wright. And here Same comes, now. Yep. Right. Here comes the ball screen. Going to come from Baker. Wright keeps the dribble. Drive. Strip. What hands? Great play by Fierro. Kentucky has a timeout. Will John Calipari call it or not? Doesn't look like he will. And now he's going to signal for it. 20.8 seconds remaining. Kentucky's out of timeouts. A chance to win the game on the road. With the final shot. We talk about a certain English is that he's able to use around the, the rim that kind of remind me of him to a degree. They're going to have Shepard inbound the ball. And they're going to start Dillingham on the low block on the far side of the court. Now he'll come get it. 15 seconds remaining. Being defended by Ward. Dillingham jumper. Got it! Kentucky takes the lead. LSU has a timeout. They're not going to use it. Seven seconds to go. Here goes Wright with five. Wright with three. Driving. Has it blocked. Gets it back. The shot. Goal! Tyrell Ward puts it in on a broken play. And LSU wins it. 75-74.